Hello everyone. So now since we have finished the methodology for sustainable product service system design, we will today talk about sufficiency economy philosophy and how can we apply it to sustainable PSS thinking. So you might remember uh, this particular terminology sufficiency economy philosophy when we were discussing about evolution of sustainability from somewhere around 1960s till now across various global platforms. So we spoke about uh, sufficiency economy philosophy as a philosophy which comes from Thailand. The purpose of this particular lecture is not to get into details of this particular um, uh, philosophy or its application into design but take this particular um, lecture more like it will help you to know about a completely different kind of an approach which can also be used for sustainable PSS thinking. So when we go through the whole lecture you will come to see how it is, how its starting points are little different but it is still a very good very appropriate method for sustainable PSS thinking. So this can, method can be put into the category of design for social equity and cohesion because the main aim, the starting point of this particular philosophical approach is that one should be able to achieve social equity and cohesion and thereby sustainability through that means. So integration of philosophy of sufficiency economy in the design of the system of or of products or services that support livelihoods or businesses at technological, sociocultural, organizational and infrastructural levels. So when we go through this particular lecture you will see that we have a slide on certain misconceptions. So there are certain misconceptions regarding this particular strategy that uh, it is only good for um, agricultural economy or it is only good for rural economy and so on. But that is not true this particular methodology can be used for design of products or services that will support livelihoods or businesses at multiple kinds of levels, uh, multiple technological levels, sociocultural, organizational and infrastructural levels. It is a holistic concept of moderation in consumption and production. So as we have been discussing about sustainability, we understood that to achieve sustainability, we have to tackle the problem from the consumption side. So the sufficiency economy philosophy its core is how do we achieve moderation in consumption and production. It is also an ethical based paradigm for sustainability so you will see values pay, play a very important role in this using appropriate knowledge to distinguish between good practices and bad practices pay, plays an important role in this. Hence, it is also an ethical paradigm for sustainability. It was formulated by the king of Thailand, His Majesty King Bhumibol Adulyadej. So let us start with the definition of uh, sufficiency economy. So around uh, this particular work on this particular philosophy had started way back in the 1960s where the king through his various experiments, through various deliberations to different community, he started imbibing into the nation the principles of sufficiency economy. But a formal definition was actually coined by a working group and then it was approved by the king in 1999. So we will discuss about this formal definition. So this formal definition consists of four statements. So we will see each of those statements and the implications. So the first statement says sufficiency economy is an approach to life and conduct. So a way of living as well as doing your work which is applicable at every level from the individual through the family and community to the management and development of the nation. So what are the implications of this particular statement? The 
it, this says that the philosophy can be applied at all levels of economy as well as society. So, at societal level I can apply this at the individual level, at the family level, at the community level, organizational and national level. So, we will take one example in which case how this uh, principle has been applied to agriculture and something called as new theory agriculture has been formulated in which it tries to start uh, solve the sustainability issues first at the individual level then the family then the community and then goes forward and provides the strategy to do the same. Coming to the second statement of the definition, it stresses a middle path especially in developing the economy to keep up with the world in the era of globalization. So, what it implies? You can see there are couple of important concepts over here, stresses the middle path and globalization. So, you can clearly say that it does not say globalization is good or globalization is bad. What it says? that you embrace globalization and in response to that we have to acquire the right kind of middle path. So, implications of this statement are follow the middle path by avoiding extreme thoughts, behavior and actions. Also accept the globalization forces. So, the middle path and the globalization forces they will work hand in hand with each other. How do I decide when you know, all these globalization forces are changing my material world, changing my cultural world, changing my social world and so on and as well as the environmental world. So, you use knowledge to make the best advantages of the good forces and avoid the bad forces. Let us go to the statement 3. So, statement 3 says sufficiency has three components. First, moderation second reasonableness and third the need for built in resilience against the risks which arise from internal or external changes. In addition the application of theories in planning and implementation requires great care and good judgment at every step. What this particular statement implies is firstly it shows us the three paths to follow. So, the three paths to follow are moderation, reasonableness and the need for built in resilience against the risk. So, the sufficiency economy philosophy has been influenced by Buddhism and it follows the same kind of philosophy in its development. Right now, we are discussing about the philosophy, we will in few slides go into its design implications. Let us go to the last statement. The last statement says at the same time all members of the nation especially public officials, academics and business people need to double up their commitment to the importance of knowledge, integrity and honesty and to conduct their life with perseverance, tolerance, wisdom, insight. So, that the country has the strength and balance to respond to the rapid and widespread changes in economy, society, environment and culture in the world. So, here you can see the importance of knowledge and we have various kind of values integrity and honesty, perseverance and tolerance, wisdom and insight these are the different values. So, in this particular philosophy what it tries to achieve is try to achieve the middle path try to achieve reasonableness, self immunity and moderation with the application of knowledge and values. You can also see that it is trying to talk about so that the country has the strength and balance to respond to various uh, rapid and widespread changes in economy, society, environment and culture in the world. You can see the hints of systemic thinking. So, whatever you do, whatever design you do, whatever activity you take up, you have to place that uh, activity in the context of the national as well as the entire global 
economy, society, environment, culture and also you have to take into consideration the changes which are coming. So, you can see that as we were discussing in the product service system design where we are talking about systemic thinking, this particular uh, approach towards uh, sustainability also is deeply ingrained in seeing the world as a uh, system. As you might remember the definitions of uh, sustainable development, we had spoken about uh, sustainability is achieved when we look at the world as a system connected in time, as a system connected in space, as a system uh, in which quality of life is also, so quality of life as a system has also to be looked upon. So, you can see the same kind of essence is coming out in this particular approach as well. So, they are talking about not only the national level, but from the individual level. So, you in one of our previous statements, we were talking at the various levels. So, starting from the individual community and going up to the national level and in this statement, you can see considering overall the entire global aspect and we are talking about all the pillars, economy, society, environment and culture in doing the same thing. So, what are the implications of this particular statement? The stress over here um, is that we do an application of knowledge. We also use value, our value system and do our design interventions in order to bring a sufficiency economy in place. So, let us summarize what all these statements together imply. So, all of us are aware that there is huge level of globalization which is happening. What this globalization leads to is it brings in different kinds of material impact. So, say for example, today uh, sitting in India, I can order um, uh, a particular product which is sold only in USA and it is possible to get that particular product in the country delivered. So, which means something which was not available, I can bring in that. When I see someone else um, using certain kind of um, material wealth, I also get influenced by that and I can um, uh, think of getting that material wealth into my life. So, the globalization has an impact on the material um, uh, uh, culture, on uh, the culture as a whole, the society as a whole. So, there is social impact and of course, the environmental impact. We have been discussing all these aspects um, in our lectures. So, now the aim of this particular philosophy is how do we shield the people from all these external and internal shocks? that is what is about sustainability. So, we can do that for that we have to bring in harmony between various elements, between various segments of the society and so on. We have to bring in security and we have to bring in sustainability. So, the sufficiency economy philosophy says that to achieve this, I will have to work with three different aspects, the interaction between these three aspects that is reasonableness, moderation and self immunity by application of knowledge and application of moral principles that is the values. So, that is the main philosophical mm, standing of sufficiency economy. So, the, although this particular mm, philosophy has been in play from the 1960s onwards, uh, Thailand met with a huge uh, financial crisis in 1997 and since then this philosophy has become a key guiding principle of Thailand's sustainable development efforts. It has been incorporated into their national economic and social development plans and major national plans and policies. It is also included in the Thailand's 4.0 vision and 20 year national strategy plan. There are numerous studies which have shown empirically that the application of mm, SAP principles have served to strengthen the well-being of businesses, people and communities. SAP is not however a one size fits all models. Its strength lies in its malleability for it can be adapted to suit individuals needs as well as applied to countries at all level of development. 
So, let us discuss some examples. You can find multitudes of examples on the internet. I will only discuss two of these examples. So, the first example comes from a uh, resort. It is called as Kumfan Kabana Resort and Diving Center. It was established in 1982. Then a time typhoon had hit this particular place in 1989 and damaged the infrastructure. So, in 1982, the resort consisted of around seven, consisted of seven bungalows and a thatch pavilion. In 1989, because of the typhoon, a lot of this infrastructure was damaged. So, this was taken as an opportunity to rethink the whole resort by using eco-friendly design principles. Later on, in 1997, the country also was hit by an economic crisis. And again, this particular philosophy mm, was used to mm, keep the mm, resort mm, financially sound, to keep it mm, still maintain its sustainability. So, let us discuss mm, how this company was able to achieve it by following this principle. So, mm, after the typhoon hit, mm, the mm, resort was held by mm, the tourism authority of Thailand to rebuild a part of uh, certain uh, parts of its infrastructure and that time they started trying to build a eco-friendly design. So, the aim was to conserve energy also integrate the resort with the natural environment so that uh, sustainability can be achieved. It also tried to achieve sustainability in various other parameters. Say for example, uh, because it is a resort and uh, it will of course serve food to its clients. It will require a lot of cleaning products because it is also a diving center. So, it will be also having certain uh, boats for the diving uh, trips. So, they tried to develop a holistic uh, system in their resort. So, uh, they went into natural agricultural techniques using which they can could grow rice and vegetables, they could raise chickens and they also produce the biodiesel which they would need for the diving trip boats. So, you can see slowly you are building up self-sufficiency. They also produce several types of cleaning liquids. Say for example, hotel use shampoos, bathroom cleaners, detergents and so on. Just because of the implementation of the cleaning uh, liquid production system by using natural uh, resources, growing those natural resources, the cost of these supplies decreased significantly from US dollar 1700 to US dollar 300 per month. So, you can see the amount of savings which could be um, achieved. Also, the mm, food waste from the kitchen could be used as chicken feed mm, or the feed for the fish. So, your chicken and fish is growing mm, use, mm, using mm, uh, waste product and the waste is not wasted. Also, the rest, mm, rest of the waste could be used as fertilizer for their rice and vegetable mm, uh, fields that they had. And they also got into environmental conservation. So, a natural water treatment system was developed using aquatic plants like water hyacinth and also they made an agreement with the Voa Line Beach community to prohibit any further development on the beachfront. Also, motorized water transportation um, uh, was uh, um, uh, prevented which also um, helps to preserve the local ecosystem. Uh, they also decided to, so all these developments could not be achieved if they were working separately. So, they have to work with the local community. Fortunately, the local community for them were farmers. So, as a result, they um, started working with the farmers so that they could develop uh, how to grow the local food and because you are located in the community, you should have a symbiotic relationship. So, they built a very nice symbiotic relationship with the local community. Now, with all these uh, interventions that they could do, another uh, crisis that they were met because of the 1997 uh, economic crisis was, they had some US dollar 1.4 million of debt. 
because they did lot of infrastructural development um, to improve the whole resort facility. Now, because of the economic crisis, the um, uh, Thai currency, it lost its value by about 30 to 40 percent. So, now their debt actually increased six folds and from this 1.4 million uh, debt, it became US dollar 8.5 million, which is a very big amount and this swelling up happened within two years of time. But um, still they could survive because of the because they design their entire activities of the resort, their way of doing business by using um, the SAP um, philosophy. This uh, ability to survive also brought in a lot of other business opportunities for them. Say for example, now they are a well known destination for organizing seminars and training where participants learn about issues related to ecotourism natural agriculture, green management systems and obviously about the sufficiency economy philosophy. They have been widely featured in many case studies and as which has also given them a uh, global uh, face. So, many and many many more people come to know about their initiatives which also attracts them more clients. So, from this example you can clearly see that this has been a context in which a um, uh, commercial enterprise uh, used the philosophy of sufficiency um, economy and came up with a good business model. Let us go to the next example. So, this one is called as new theory agriculture. This particular um, technique was uh, um, experimented and perfected by the king himself in his own um, uh, palace fields and then it was disseminated to um, the people of Thailand. So, this particular um, uh, theory it has three stages. So, sufficiency at the household level, the community level and the national level. So, in the first stage which is the household level. So, first you have to achieve sufficiency at the household level and only then you can go to the next level. So, to create the sufficiency at the household level, what you have to do? So, you have to be able to meet the most basic life necessities. By uh, this it might mean say effective land management for housing, ample clean water, nutritious food resources, access to well-being through locally grown herbs. So, in order to achieve all this thing, depending on the location, depending on uh, the terrain and other geographical aspects and uh, socio-spatial uh, uh, aspects, uh, appropriate and sustainable farming technologies were designed and farmers were educated so that they can select the most appropriate and su sustainable farming technology suitable for their requirements. They could make use of say interrelationship between mm, uh, insects and weed control and then naturally mm, grow mm, their crops without addition of pesticides or weedicides and so on. Also like proper crop rotation, holistic agro system. Now, the first stage is achieved. Once the first stage is achieved, one has to move to the second stage that is the community level. So, to create sufficiency at the community level, various kind of activities uh, which mm, help you to share resources also help you to mm, do business together. Say for example, cooperatives were mm, built in. So, the cooperatives can together mm, do various activities, various agronomic activities more efficiently. Also, they mm, have better efficiency in selling their produces. So, uh, because of this uh, uh, community level uh, cooperative and sharing um, activities, they could achieve a more self-reliant community rather than depending on the middlemen who might exploit them. Uh, other activities like saving groups, community enterprises, healthcare centers, they were all set up so that this second stage of sufficiency can be achieved. Now, let us go to the third stage that is sufficiency at the national level. 
so that is the most advanced of all the three um, stages and is achieved when communities reach out to outside sources and expand their ac activities across different levels of organizations say for example if you remember the example of the warnapura so the communities reached out and they expanded their activities across different levels of organizations so from dairy farms to cooperative banks to schools to colleges to research centers and so on so when and then you keep on expanding in this way and at that particular level you are reaching the sufficiency at the national level so at this stage institutions these can be private firms as well as government firms they can join hands in collaborative ways initiate social responsibility to reach out to communities they can offer them various facilities create institutional arrangements create infrastructure facilities and so on. so this was the new theory agriculture which was built following sufficiency at the three stages so you first achieve household level then community level and then the national level so we saw two examples one is from business context and another one is from agriculture context but it again builds up uh, from the household level to the national level so in response to all these uh, activities in may 2006 UN secretary general Kofi Annan he presented the first human development lifetime achievement award to his majesty in recognition of his visionary thinking and 60 years of contribution to human development now let's try to compare the pss thinking that we had been uh, discussing with the sufficiency economy philosophy so sufficiency economy philosophy we can call it as a holistic concept because it is trying to work at various levels and trying to integrate all levels of economy and society so both the approaches they are concerned with preserving the environment they favor system oriented development and thinking we already discussed the system orientedness of sufficiency economy as well as the pss thinking they are also based on setting priorities on stakeholder interactions so all that we discussed in sufficiency economy till now you could easily see it's not possible without stakeholder good stakeholder in, uh, interaction from which starts from the household level and reaches up to the national level so both the thinking has this uh, heavy priority on stakeholder interaction so sustainability can be achieved by uh, well designed stakeholder interactions so now let's uh, talk about design for a sufficiency economy so till now what we were discussing where was the philosophy usually people find it very difficult to implement it or that is design for su sufficiency economy so what does um, uh, the designer have to do in this particular context so the designer has to meet two requirements first the designer has to measure the existing users behavior to check the degree of compliance to sustainable economy philosophy to how what degree there is a compliance then when the needs of the users have been identified so as designers we always go to the users try to identify their needs we have to set priorities to that those needs so the priority to the need has to be set according to principles of sufficiency economy that is moderation self immunity reasonableness with application of knowledge and values so this is what you know, design for sufficiency economy implies at a broader level let's go into more depth of this so before going in we will discuss certain misconceptions as i told you one misconception is that it is meant only for agriculture sector or rural economy only but that is not true there are ample number of examples in which it has been applied so we saw one from the tourism sector it has been also applied to some urban economic situations it requires you to produce your own food clothes and all other requirements of course this is what never is the aim of sufficiency economy so if you see if you go back to our slide where we summarized what it 
talks about reasonableness, moderation, self-immunity, application of knowledge, appropriate knowledge to make a distinction between good practices and bad practices and application of moral principles to get harmony, security and sustainability so that one can shield people from the external and internal shocks. What are these shocks? Because of globalization, I have material impact, cultural impact, social impact and environmental impact. So nowhere we are saying that you have to go back to your basic way of living or you have to mm, produce your own food, your own clothes and all other requirements. It says embrace globalization and mm, still you have to bring in the balance, you have to go to the middle path by bringing in harmony, security and sustainability by applying appropriate knowledge, moral principles and get reasonableness, moderation and self-immunity. So it's not at all true that you have to produce your own mm, consumption things or a person will have to return to the most basic ways of living and behavior that is not very true. You can apply it at all societal and economic levels. So if uh, you have gone through the reading material for MSDS methodology, you would have seen uh, for each and every tool, there was this aspect of how to integrate it with the sustainable eco uh, uh, sufficiency economy philosophy. So we will discuss that right now. So what were the objectives of MSDS uh, methodology? The key objectives were existing system assessment, setting the sustainability priority, generating a sustainability focused idea for SPSS and checking or visualizing the sustainability improvement or worsening of developed concepts as compared to existing system. So as you saw in our slide on how to design for sustainable economy, we said that first the designer has to figure out whether the consumer, whether the users at this moment, they are following the principles of SAP and to what extent. So that is part of my existing system assessment. Then the next part was after you have gathered the needs from the users, you have to set priority to those needs on the basis of the SAP principles, so which is the setting the sustainability priority. Then in the next two stages, we use the SAP uh, philosophy to generate sustainability focused ideas and to check or visualize the sustainability improvement or worsening. So how are we going to do that? So the stages of MSDS and we will create the overlap with the um, uh, DSC. So your stage one was strategic analysis, then exploring opportunities, then system concept design, system detail design and communication. So for strategic analysis, we do sufficiency need assessment. In the exploring opportunities, we will do sufficiency opportunity exploration. In system concept design, we will do sufficiency system design. In system detail design, we will do sufficiency system implementation as well as sufficiency design evaluation. Then in communication, we will do sufficiency design communication. So the aim of this particular lecture is not to go in great details about uh, designing with uh, sufficiency economy because it is a large topic in itself. So we will make a cursory um, uh, uh, rundown through the various stages that uh, are mentioned that is the need assessment and opportunity exploration and so on and see how it works. For people who are um, more interested in this particular topic and want to explore um, uh, further, they um, can go through the um, reading material on product service system design and the tools and um, the techniques for doing the same are explained in um, detail over there. And for this particular course, this uh, is not a mandatory requirement. This part is only meant for people who are interested in exploring DSE more in, a, in, a more, in greater depth. So the first step which is the sufficiency need assessment. 
so what do we do in this particular um, uh, process is first we try to observe users and uh, conducting and conduct a task analysis like what all they are doing and we analyze the task this helps us to have a summary of user behavior and how the existing system operates so say for example i take a particular business i will observe all the users what are the different tasks that they are conducting so in the eco tourism context only so they have uh, different buildings in which they have to do cleaning of the buildings cleaning of uh, their bed sheets and uh, all other things also they have to have uh, different kinds of cleaning agents which will be provided to the uh, customers there will be food which has to be provided to the customers because it's also diving center so uh, infrastructure for diving because it's a natural uh, uh, tourism spot so how do i maintain the um, ecosystem's pristineness so i do a thorough uh, observe all these different tasks and do a task analysis as a result i will know my users behavior and how the existing system operates then defining the material products or immaterial services actors and flows in the existing system so which is something similar as our systems map that is list of products or services and actors or the called as stakeholders in the existing system so this is basically our systems map where i try to put down all the material flows all the service flows all the information flows all the financial flows between the different stakeholders in the existing system then i map the current stakeholder interaction how one stakeholder interacts with another person so say how the uh, visitor how the person who has come on a touristic journey over there how that person interacts with the whole resort staff or how the uh, this person interacts with the say the farmer in the resort who is growing the food for this person or say how the farmer who belongs to the local community interacts with the resort and so on so i map all the current stakeholder interactions so systems map that illustrate the stakeholder relationships in the current system you can see lot of parallels between our msds methodology and the sufficiency need assessment there are specific worksheets which have been developed which help you doing all these activities keeping in mind the sufficiency economy philosophy then detecting the key changes or drivers related to the existing situation so what might change so summary of future trends related to existing situation so i might expect that uh, say in my country a lot of uh, the Uh, drink which is a very popular drink a main ingredient of the drink is imported so there is a high risk with that particular ingredient can i start producing that ingredient in house or say for example i realize that being a resort my expenditure on cleaning products is extremely high it is one of the biggest component of my expenditure what can i do so that i can create self reliance over there or what can i do so that i can bring in moderation over there say i figure out that a lot of water is wasted wasted over there i want to bring in moderation over there reasonableness over there and i also want to bring self immunity that i should be able to do have that resource called water always flowing in through then assessing whether the existing conducts are in line with the principles of sap and assessing the current sufficiency level so here what i do is i create a summary of the sufficiency level of the existing situation on a scale of 0 to 6 the last sub process in this particular need assessment process is assessing the balance of the existing situation like we spoke it's all about harmony so visualize efficiency level balance of the existing situation regarding both the four dimensions that is people planet profit and technology and the three components within each dimension reasonableness moderation and self immunity so now when we are discussing about the design principles you can clearly see that how you are trying to integrate 
all the philosophical aspects that we discussed in the beginning of this lecture. So, I am trying to see what level of balance exists between the four dimensions of people, planet, profit and technology and the three components within each of these dimensions where the balance has gone uh, uh, lopsided and I can design accordingly. Then comes my sufficiency opportunity exploration. This is, belongs to the second stage of the MSDS method where we start um, exploring opportunities. So, the first sub process over here is identification of these strengths and weaknesses that exist now and future opportunities and threats. Uh, threats. So, we will do a SWOT analysis. Then we do analysis of company SWOT in relation to sufficiency economy principles. So, SAP relevant SWOT analysis is supposed to be done. So, they have worksheets which help you do this particular activity. Then identifying company drivers, design goals and objectives which becomes your document identifying design drivers, document defining goal and objectives of design as a company or a system provider. So, I will try to understand what are the uh, goals and objectives of my design in the context if I want to work something out for this resort considering DSE. Then I go into generating knowledge and morality oriented system ideas. So, in your MSDS methodology also I was coming trying to generate system ideas in those particular contexts you had cues which helps you to generate system ideas on the social dimension, the environmental dimension and the economic dimension. Here you are generating knowledge and morality oriented system ideas. So, so, this one is in combination of the MSDS methodology of course. So, list of knowledge and morality promotion ideas will come out of this particular aspect. Then generating sufficiency promising system idea, visualizing sufficiency promising system ideas. So, you generate those and you visualize those. So, this is a document which will consist of your ideas and sketches generated as a result of it. Then we will go to the third step. So, this is my system design stage from the MSDS methodology. So, I will do sufficiency system design along with following the MSDS methodology. So, my first sub process in this case is creating concepts by selecting the relevant ideas and combining them into themes. So, I will get sketches of ideas for new sufficiency PSS. So, now we call this as a SEPSS. So, this is a sufficiency PSS. Then I will be selecting the most promising themes and further developing it using tools relevant to system design. So, we will use systems map and all those tools that we have already discussed. Once this is done, then we go into the detailing phase. In the detailing phase, we have two steps. Uh, from the sufficiency um, uh, economy um, uh, principles. So, the first step is when we are doing sufficiency system implementation. In this particular step what we are trying to do is constructing a thorough plan of operation. So, we are detailing my, our system. So, it has to have a thorough plan of operation how the whole system will work. So, document and storyboards that detail the new sufficiency PSS regarding its operation, roles, solutions and what components are needed in each operating step. So, it is very similar to the MSDS method now because you know about the steps of MSDS method. So, I am not going back and to all those methods in case you are not able to recall them you can go back to the um, slides and see the sync between the MSDS and these sufficiency system aspects. Then next step in the implementation is designing, defining and designing the components of it. So, you list and design the components that support the new sufficiency PSS in 5 categories. First is tools, then is interaction rules, then required competences, supplied information and context. Once this step is done, the next step is doing an evaluation of it on the sufficiency economy 
principles. So you evaluating the sufficiency of the new PSS. Visualization of the degree of improvement of the new sufficiency PSS in comparison to the existing one on a scale of 0 to 6. So, you remember in our first step when we were doing an assessment, the sufficiency assessment of the existing system, we had created a visualization in which we did a comparison on a scale of 0 to 6. So, now we will again do the evaluation to identify the improvement or worsening brought in. Then evaluating the degree of sufficiency in terms of balance and in comparison to the existing system in each component as well as overall balance of all four dimensions. So, if you remember we did this people, planet, profit and technology on the three reasonableness, moderation and self sufficiency. So, we again evaluate this particular balance and check out what is the improvement or worsening as compared to my mm, existing situation. Thereafter, the task is about communicating this to different stakeholders. So, in that particular context, we can again use mm, written documents or say interaction storyboards like we had already discussed in the MSDS methodology or the story spot that we discussed in the MSDS methodology. So, in this particular mm, lecture, we discussed about a mm, philosophy which can be uh, combined with our SPSS uh, methodology and it can help you to design for social equity and cohesion. Uh, n, uh, we do not want to put too much of focus. So, if you remember in n, uh, when we were discussing our MSDS methodology, when we were into strategic analysis that is the first step of the MSDS methodology, we took two contexts. One was a context where you can easily identify a company or a stakeholder. There was another second context where it, we called it as a socio-economic context. So, where it was very difficult to identify one stakeholder. So, that was one particular mm, mm, uh, diversion in the MSDS methodology which could have been taken in all those contexts where the social and the economic N, uh, uh, ecosystem n, uh, where the social ecosystem determines the economic activities of n, uh, people and this is another context in which our whole focus is on social equity and cohesion and then achieve sustainability from there. So, I have listed down some of the reading materials. So, chapter 12 of the book that we were using for the MSDS methodology details out the n, uh, sustainable sufficiency economy philosophy and there are some other reading materials which you can also go through and learn more about this topic in case you are more interested about it. Thank you so much.